Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. How do I drag and drop number two? So picking up from our last video, we were able to learn how to create a drag event, drop it, and then we get something to happen. And we were passing along that information using a unique ID, using just the tag itself. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the class option for the drag and drop operation so we can pass along information based on what we want to pass along. And we pass it along as part of the drag and drop operation itself. So let's see how this would work. When I've created this item right here, I'm going to go ahead and go into my drag two and I'm going to hook up its section, which is going to be the second part right here. And we'll move this back and we'll go ahead and run this and we'll see a slight difference. I can drag, I can drop. We get the same result, but all we're getting is super name at the top. However, how we're getting it is different. Let's go ahead and look at how it works. So let's go ahead and do a drag and drop operation. Which of course is a pain in the butt because you have to create it. Uh, where are you tighten that? Seriously? There we go. Okay, so we have a drag and drop operation right here. And you'll notice this one, which is a raw one, does not look the same as this one, which I'm using the class for. When you change the class, to something. By default, it's going to be a drag drop operation. And the default drag drop operation class provides you with these things. Tag, payload, a default drag visual, a pivot, and an offset. And it's going to return back the result. If you do none, well, this is basically all it is. You create it and then it returns back the result. But it's not going to contain any data. If you want more than just the default data, you're going to have to create your own drag and drop operation. They're pretty simple. I have a drag and drop operation right here. You can just do a new blueprint, type drag and drop, and you'll find under actor a drag and uh, yeah. you'll find right here drag and drop operation, which I didn't spell it right, so that didn't help. Drag drop. There we go. It's called a drag drop operation. We can select it and we'll just call this one, you know, um, blueprint drag drop test. This is a blank one. When it comes in, you're basically going to find nothing because there's nothing in the default one except for the things that are passed down from the parent class, which is our tag, our payload, our drag visual, and our pivot. There's also an offset, but that's hidden by default. And those match, if you noticed, our defaults when we did the drag drop operation these items right here now this one is my custom one it looks different because i have added in extra variables i want to pass along how do we do that well it's pretty simple let's open up the one i created and let's look at it and you should be able to notice a difference it's just these that's it it's just the variables i've added a skill id a skill name and a skill cost that's it. Now there's something to note here. You'll notice a skill ID, a skill name, and a skill cost. We'll go back to here and we'll look at here and we'll notice what well, we have, what I said came by default, a skill ID and a skill name, but no skill cost. The reason for that is when you are creating something, if you have the variable set to expose on spawn, that will show up when you create it, when you're spawning it. You'll notice this says expose on pawn, this says expose on spawn, this one does not. If I was to check it and compile, go back and stop that thing, we'll find we now have a skill cost as an additional variable we can plug in. Now let me go ahead and just fill this in as 100. Right now this doesn't really help us too much. Everything's being filled in manually. We should be pulling from like a table or something like that, but for my example, it's just showing you what the class does. So in this case, I've gone in and filled in an ID, a name, and a cost, and I've got a return node when I'm done. So it's going to be just the same as before. The only difference is now I have extra fields I can fill in. I don't have just the tag, but now I have stuff I can fill in. In terms of using it on our drag 2, 
it's basically going to our operation our operation is this right here we're going to open up our operation and get out what we want now our operation is generic it's going to be a drag drop operation reference since this is a specific class a child of the drag drop we need to make sure we cast it to our version which is our blueprint how the heck drag and drop operation so I basically pull my operation out cast it to my specific version and now when I do my getter you'll notice we have the extra ones we've added in skill cost ID and name now keep in mind here you may want a variable inside of here let's say we call this um, stupid variable now nah, let's call it hidden variable it makes it more sense we'll call this the hidden variable and I'm gonna go ahead and not expose it just because it's not exposed darn it on here when we're creating it doesn't mean it's not still there hidden variable when we actually get the variable just like a class just like any other thing we've created it is still exist it's just not exposed on spawn so now that we have our actual drag and drop operation that we filled out here we can pull our skill name out and print it and that's what I'm doing here instead of just getting the ID and the tag basically and trying to figure out what it was I'm actually looking at the class information that was passed along and printing out the name and of course since it's variables I could always do something like get the ID and print that out if I can hook it up properly there we go and you know I'm gonna get the ID now that I pass along I'm gonna get one and of course if I was to pass along something else like 22 it's gonna give me back 22 so that is the class version of the drag and drop operation it's basically going to give us extra information we can use and we're going to be able to pass it along inside the actual drag drop operation itself as additional values and then we can do whatever we want once we receive it.